Hopefully, Ubisoft does the Vikings justice. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things we don't want in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. For this list, we're looking at all the features we hope don't make an appearance in Ubisoft's next historical epic. Number 10, game-breaking bugs. Nobody playing any game, no matter who made it or what it's about, wants to encounter game-breaking bugs. When Assassin's Creed Unity became one of the most infamously disastrous launches in gaming history, full of glitches from the outset, it created a shadow over the franchise that Ubisoft hasn't been able to escape from. Many players still have less sympathy for bugs in an Assassin's Creed game than in other titles. This means the scrutiny will be high when Valhalla comes out, and it would still be a shame for the first AC title on next-gen consoles to be marred by bugs. Number 9. Playable Modern Day Are you sure we can trust this thing? I mean, the book could be... Just started, Victoria. You're the boss, boss. In the early days, Desmond's story in the modern era was an intriguing and fun break from the main gameplay, exploring the ongoing Templar assassin conflict. However, some later games have had modern-day segments that are sorely lacking. From Black Flag's strange diversions looking for sticky notes in Abstergo's offices, to Leila Hassan's immersion-breaking segments, sometimes the modern-day story isn't too interesting. This doesn't mean it should be abandoned entirely, but could possibly be relegated to brief cutscenes that doesn't completely pull you out of the game. Leila is returning for Valhalla, so Ubisoft has a chance to make her appearance less of a chore. Promise me one thing. Anything. When you are done, destroy it. Destroy them all. Number 8. A God of War clone. Twenty eighteen gave us perhaps the best exploration of Norse mythology in gaming when God of War released to critical acclaim, becoming an essential PS4 title. While Viking culture is large and varied, if Valhalla follows the established trend of bringing in mythological figures, there's a danger it could become too similar to God of War. Great as the game is, and while Valhalla will be available to Xbox players where God of War isn't, we hope it's not derivative. Luckily, developers have spoken out and said Valhalla will be historically grounded rather than skewing toward the mythology, so it should be different enough. Number 7. Multiplayer You have taken the lead. Massacre. They've never been able to perfect Assassin's Creed multiplayer. The first attempt at bringing online play to the series was in Brotherhood, and though it was fun enough when the game was new, it was never really taken too seriously. Multiplayer went from a separate optional mode to something messy and broken by the time we got Unity, featuring many tedious co-op missions that took over the map. Valhalla has already had its raid system revealed and developers have talked about sharing your custom raiders among your friends. Hopefully, this is the extent of the multiplayer and we don't get something weird and half-baked. Number 6. Adrenaline Soldiers are everywhere. After Unity, Ubisoft took some time to lick their wounds before returning with Origins, completely revamping the franchise in the most dramatic move yet. One of the biggest changes was to the combat. No more button mashing and instant kill counters. With the new games, your adrenaline meter rules the day. But in Odyssey, having to balance focusing on the fight, filling your adrenaline meter, and paying attention to ability cooldowns can quickly get tiresome. Trust me, I've played a lot of Odyssey. Plus, isn't it overkill to have both the adrenaline system and ability cooldowns? It's clear the combat system has yet to be perfected, even after 11 mainline entries, but maybe Valhalla will change that. Number 5. Crafting Plenty of modern games, especially open-world and RPGs, implement crafting systems, and they've been an Assassin's Creed staple since Connor began improving his homestead. In Origins, you need to actively hunt for resources to upgrade equipment. While the system was simplified in Odyssey, you're still expected to amass plenty of resources. But when you can loot enough weapons and avoid enough naval battles to make the crafting system practically redundant, it makes you wonder why they keep bringing it back. With the ability to build a settlement front and center in Valhalla, there will undoubtedly be crafting, 
We just hope it'll be more fun than cumbersome this time around. Number 4. Bad Stealth One of the biggest criticisms levied at Origins and Odyssey and their gameplay overhaul is that it's harder, though not impossible, to play stealth compared to the previous titles. Since the franchise made its name on stealth, you are generally playing as an assassin after all. This has rubbed a few veteran players the wrong way. We already saw in Valhalla's trailer that the Hidden Blade is making a triumphant return after being absent from Odyssey, even if it is worn differently. So hopefully, this means you'll have the opportunity to be a little stealthier if that's how you want to play. What is the show? Number 3. Repetitive Gameplay Another major flaw with Odyssey was that while the game was overflowing with content, lots of it wasn't meaningful. It was easy to find yourself endlessly taking over forts, fighting conquest battles, and looting treasure, until you leveled up enough to get back to the story missions. Developers have already said that Valhalla will be scaled down in response to this criticism, meaning the map will be smaller, so hopefully there will be less repetitive gameplay. Few will find issue if the game is shorter, but the content that's actually in it is better, and therefore more fun overall. Yeah! Number 2. Tailing Missions You are men of discernment. Thankfully, tailing missions haven't reared their ugly head in recent entries, but this doesn't mean we've recovered from having to suffer through them for so many years. From the beginning, tailing missions were the worst part of every game they appeared in. They were annoying, took too long, and were easy to fail if you don't know exactly the route you were supposed to take. That's why we hope Ubisoft continues the trend of foregoing tailing missions entirely. Since Origins and Odyssey didn't count tailing as part of their gameplay, this bodes well for players who had already grown sick of them by Black Flag. Nonsense, man. I had a delightful conversation with a chap just now. We came to quite an understanding. Want more video game content? Check out our gaming channel Mojo Plays and discover games and ideas you never knew existed. With more lists, breakdowns, and our latest series, Arcade Roulette. Justin and John are in! Oh. Hey, is that Porky Pig? Mm. There's a lot of things being ripped off in this game. Number 1. A Boring Protagonist Well, when you don't invite me to your parties, everyone suffers. I did try, but my father was adamant. Assassin's Creed can sometimes get a little formulaic, and one of the best ways to counter this is by having a great story and at the heart of it, an even greater protagonist. A bad main character can ruin a game. Many people who dislike Assassin's Creed 3 bring up that they think Connor is a boring hero, and similar critiques are made of Arno and even Altair. In contrast, Ezio is an iconic character and a fan favorite, so it's no surprise we had three whole games about him. Recent characters like Bayek and Cassandra definitely haven't disappointed, so let's hope Ivor isn't a step back. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.